Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this panel. This is the Art and Torcon, a history panel. Basically, we're going to be running you through the past 16 years of Torcon art. Uh, my name is Rachel. I'm the media director. Uh, I've been media director. This is my third year, and I've been an artist for four years. And I'm Alistair. <laughs> I was the uh, first media director prior to Rachel taking my position after my stepping down in graduation. Um, a lot of the stuff I know here that she doesn't, and there's a lot of stuff that neither of us really are familiar with, but we've been digging through the archives, really interested in all the stuff we have to share. <laughs> Hopefully you'll like what you see. Yeah, so I just wanted to give a big thank you to Jessie, who is the AMB contest coordinator. She actually help, helped us put together the slideshow and find all the stuff in the archives and even write a script for us, so we're going to be going off of that. So. Uh, we're going to sound like we know a lot more than we actually do. Um, but yeah, thank you, Jesse. So we're going to talk about the first decade right now. Uh, basically, we're splitting this into pre-mascot and post-mascot, which I'm sure you know the mascots by now. We've been using them all over social media, all over Toricon, and you'll get to know them a little more um, today. So in 2005, it was pretty pretty simple. Toricon was a one-day sort of event, and there was no con pamphlet. It was just a one double-sided page with four pieces of art, which you can see here. Okay, These were all attributed to Yuko Aido Ota on the back of the pamphlet. Uh, she was likely a member of the RIT Anime Club, if not a direct staff member. We don't really have all the information here, so please bear with us. Um, so we really I feel I should chime in. Yeah, okay. I feel I should chime in. <laughs> okay. Um, if any, if any of you people watching us do know any of these artists that we don't, feel free to you know pop their name or any of their internet handles in there. I know that a lot of these are from like you know ten, fifteen years ago, but who knows? Maybe one of you attendees out there would be like, "Hey, I know that person. Feel free to you know hit us up and let us credit them properly." Yeah, especially of anything that you could contribute to the archive and like scan and send us, that would be amazing too, because we like to keep track of all the art and stuff. Uh, we have a, a much better process of archiving now, but of course we didn't for the first uh, decade or so. So um, yeah, back then we really had no idea, uh, or I should say they, because I was not a member, they had no idea of what Toricon would really turn into. Um, and we really didn't, realize how important all this uh information would be to save so uh pretty and much some people can, sorry some, go ahead <laughs> sorry some people could make the argument that the first Toricon was actually in 2004 when the anime club held a uh single cosplay contest it wasn't you know advertised as a con of any sort but it was that event in which they decided to you know keep going the next year and 20 2005 is uh when they first actually called it Toracon, but you could make the argument that, hey, 2004, that was the first one. Oh, I never knew that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So let's go I'm surprised on. Jesse didn't put the initial uh, advertisement for that in this, you know, slideshow. Oh, there was an initial advertisement? Huh. There was. Yeah, I guess you got to get, get out the information somehow. Um, so let's move on to 2006. Uh, here is the attendee shirt. Uh, you'll notice that Toricon had already begun using the kanji for Toro, which, uh, as you should probably know by now, means tiger, because we are located in RIT. <laughs> so, like, as you can see, we've got the attendee shirt, we've got the staff shirt. Um, I believe this is the first year, and I mean, this is only, like, the second year of the con, but the first year that, you know, we stuck by that white print on black shirt kind of thing that we've kept going through the years. Um... Who knows, maybe we'll change it one day, maybe we'll go color. That'd be fun to see, now that we have, you know, our four different colored uh, mascot characters. Uh, but let's see here. I was gonna... Go back. Go back. Oh my gosh. Go back. <laughs> no. Okay, so uh, the attendee shirt here, uh, this is credit to, credited to a Diane R. Um, we don't know who the artist is for the staff shirt, but like I said, if anyone does, feel free to drop their name. Next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said before, like a lot of our, you know, credits to early uh, art and stuff, we kind of 
don't have it. Google Drive wasn't exactly, you know, the big thing it is today, Dropbox and file sharing and all that. So a lot of it was, you know, physical art just scanned in or, you know, no one knew Toracon was going to be, you know, the big one of the big Rochester events of the year. Um, they thought it was just, you know, a fun club kind of thing. And I mean, in a way, it still is. Spirit is still there and it is still an RIT event. But, you know, try really hard nowadays, you know, keep track of who did what and really, you know, give credit where credit's due. Um, so, you know, like I said, reach out to us if you know who and did any of this stuff, because frankly, like none of us still around really know. So in 2007, here are the attendee and staff shirts. Uh, you have the the full across the chest design like normal, um, one with the staff shirt actually had staff on the backside. And a staff shirt image was created by the actual 2007 con chair, Alice. Uh, and in 2007, it was the first year that Toracon had a con book. So you could see some of the con book here. Um, unfortunately, we don't have examples of the badges in our archives. But uh, I also believe 2007 was when we started uh, outsourcing our art to attendees. So you can see the name of some attendees. Maybe you see your, your own name in here. That would be pretty cool. Um, let us know so we can, you know, maybe shout you out on Twitter or something. And we did all of this, um, you know, uh, attendee submitted art up until around uh, 2014. This was bef like right before I came into, you know, the staffing team. And all the artists who got to submit stuff were actually, you know, compensated, I believe, usually with a free badge and a shirt. I could be wrong. It was something along those lines, though. It's just it later became really hard logistically to keep it going. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if everyone submitted art now, we would sell, like, no badges, and we'd have to use all the art. It would be a, a huge logistical nightmare. Toracon would make $2 and a shoestring. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's move on to uh, 2008, then. Uh, so here we have the attendee shirt again, and also the staff shirt, which apparently was sort of, like, a pocket size. I don't know why they did that, because it's kind of hard to see, but... Uh, if you know now, the staff shirts typically have uh, Toracon, the year, and staff on the front, and then the big design on the back. And they're bright orange. Yeah, that's fun. You can uh, you can see us from a mile away. Which is good. You want that. Yeah. It'd be horrible if the staff just blended into the crowd and no one knew who was who. <laughs> Absolutely. You also stand out in public after the fact. All right. <laughs> so like a beacon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this uh, is the con book cover for 2008, and the uh, image was done by Diane Roth. And you can tell that the attendee shirt was simply a line drawing version of the book cover. And it's basically um, a Sailor Moon sort of theme. You know, we can't use the actual Sailor Moon or anything because of copyright. Um, that's probably pretty obvious. But uh, this is probably very likely the same Diane R., that we saw in 2006 with the attendee shirt. So a lot of this, uh, the, the art on the, like the top of this slide, those are all inserts from the con book from that year. The middle one, unlike the other two, uh, was not credited. So if you knew who drew this cute little tiger, please let us know. Um, and the badge was done by, by a Kristen C. Very cute. All right, so on the slide, we have, as you can see, the attendee shirt, enforcer shirt, and staff shirt. You're probably sitting there like, well, what about volunteers? Volunteers were a thing, or are a thing. Well, at the time, they were better known as enforcers, and there was actually some overlap in the following years where there was a d difference between enforcers and volunteers. That's a d discussion for outside of, you know, the art scene, but that's a little fun fact for this panel. Not that, you know, all the other facts aren't quite fun. Um, <laughs> But uh, these uh, shirts, or the attendee and enforcer ones, I believe, were done by a Caitlin N. Uh, moving on to a nice close-up of the con book cover. Uh, on the right, you could see a really cute tiger girl. I absolutely love her outfit. I would love to cosplay her. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was 
printed on large posters to advertise the convention, which is something you might see around campus when Toricon uh, is close to happening now. Um, unfortunately, we don't know the artists uh, on either side image, but the middle image is also done by Caitlin N, uh, which is used within the 2009 con book. It's a chibi version of that Tiger Sailor Scout you just saw recently that Diane made in 2008, and it was on the con book in the attendee shirt. And what's really cool is that we actually have this color drawing because Caitlin reached out to us a few years ago, and she sent over some original scans, which is really cool of her. And these are the badge designs from that year, and frankly, they are, and I, I agree with Jesse's, you know, little notes, they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, I believe this artist has a DeviantArt page. I just wish I could remember it off the top of my head because I've seen them floating around the internet before. Oh, and I they are, you know, just absolutely delightful. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, the one with the sushi is adorable. <laughs> mm. Man, I wish I could draw like that. I only draw anime people, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. So now you can finally see our famous orange staff shirts. Uh, I guess they officially started in 2010. Uh, on the right is the attendee shirts. And unfortunately, we don't know the artists for these shirts. But nonetheless, they're very adorable. Moving on. We also have you know, the badge designs for 2010. These ones are credited to a Charlotte C. And I just love the... Uh, uh, cat people here. <laughs> They're so cute. Yeah, these are some really good designs. I wish we could, you know, talk to Charlotte and maybe <laughs> get them to work for us again. We're not getting paid. Yeah. Don't say work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not work. Volunteer, my Voluntold. Bad. Yeah, voluntold. <laughs> um, but this is actually quite iconic. Uh, you might have seen this uh, in our 15-year celebration the two uh, Japanese festival scenes. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know the name of the artist, but still the art lives in our hearts today and we absolutely love it. Go ahead. Rar means I love you in cat boy. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I just had to throw it in there. Ooh, uh, these are the... Uh... These are the designs for the staff and volunteer shirts. As you can see, this is just a scan from the con book at the time. But imagine, if you will, these printed on an orange and a black t-shirt. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. The staff design was by a Joyce T. Um, no enforcer shirt, curiously. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, sorry, the, the previous slide was actually staff and uh, volunteer shirts. This one is the attendee shirt, which as you can see just matches the art on the attendee badge to really, you know, knock home the fact that you are an attendee or just really like this cat boy in particular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and both these were done by uh, Caitlin N. And uh, I'm sure you'll see them later again in the 15-year uh, celebration. Oh, this one's awesome. Oh my gosh. Alistair, do you want to talk about this? How could I not want to talk <laughs> about Gurren Lagan Tiger? <laughs> Look at him just hanging out on top of RIT's big giant pile of metal, the Sentinel. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's supposed to, isn't it supposed to look like the, the sculpture itself, like a knight on a horse or something from a certain angle. I never saw it. It just I'm, looks like scrap metal. That's I, beside the point. Yeah. We've got a cat boy on top of it now. <laughs> we should install that in real life. I uh, we don't know that. who the artist for this one is either. Um, and we also have this wonderful tiger lady that looks an awful lot like our current mascot, Kyo. Um, this is a submission for the 2012 art contest, apparently. And the submission was by an Alyssa R. Starting to piece together some things. Might have some inspiration in further years. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. This is 2012. And as you can see here, we have the attendee, staff, and volunteer shirts, all in very different styles. 
Unfortunately, we don't have any digital files from uh, most of the art contest submissions from 2012. I'd be shocked if people still do. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it's such a long time ago. But uh, we do know who did the attendee shirt. It was Kristen A. And the volunteer shirt was done by Kelly. Uh, we also have the vendor attendee weekend and volunteer badges. Um, you can see that there are some different art styles here. Uh, the attendee badge was done by Rachel S., no relation to me. Um, but we don't know who did the vendor and volunteer badge. And you'll notice on these badges, we actually have the uh, shiny holographic sticker. Those things, fun fact, cost a lot. They are a good way to like really foolproof the badge so no one tries to fake one. Also, shout outs to Hammer Girl Anime for being on the vendor badge there. <laughs> oh god, I also love this cat girl. Gosh. I'm pretty sure someone cosplayed her one year. Oh my gosh. Did they? Oh my gosh. If anyone I'm pretty has... sure I've seen a cosplay of the pink one, yes. That's excellent. If anyone has any photos of that cosplay, I would love to see and share on the social media because I... Uh, help run the social well i am in charge of the social media um and as that you was my see, job until covid crippled me <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty tough work but you have a job now so <laughs> i understand sure. um so you could see here we have the 2012 con book uh with the uh the tiger girl on the left is done by jamie t and the tiger girl on the right, who kind of looks like a Vocaloid girl, which I can appreciate, she was done by our lovely Jessie C. I like to think that these two cat girls are dating. Oh, That's that just me, so though. so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. And here we've got our attendee staff. Staff, enforcer, and volunteer shirt. They were all in one that year. Which I guess might have might might have made things a little bit confusing at the time, because <laughs> I feel like there's a benefit to differentiating between you know the staff and volunteers. But it's still a nice design nonetheless. Nice curly haired cat girl, I believe, inspired by Urusai Yatsura. At least it looks an awful lot like it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I would have never made that connection. And it's just the stripy bikini type of look, uh, you know, yeah. and the horns. I see that. We're probably cat ears, but I mean, you know, <laughs> they're close enough. Close enough, yeah. <laughs> so on the far right, we have the 2013 con book. You can see there with the cute little uh, blue and orange tiger girl. She's very fancy. I love her. Um, on the left side is a collection of some of the artwork we have within the con book. Unfortunately, we don't know the artist for most of these, except for the one on the bottom right, which was produced by Urena M. I have never seen that Pocky picture before, just as a side note. Oh, you haven't? Let's go back and look at it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> I've never seen that Oracle one before. Pocky. Uh... I can't tell if it's just like photoshopped onto like a box of one. It probably is. It's kind of hard to tell from the small thumbnail of it. That's so cool. We got to talk to Pocky. We need to get a deal here. That'd be Sponsorship so win? Yeah. <laughs> And here's the badges from that same year. I don't believe we have, once again, any of the artist information, but uh, there seems to be, you know, a big variant of artists doing the badges this year. Absolutely. Yeah, I could see a lot of different styles. I particularly love the Gundam. Uh, I would love to know who would do that, who did that, so I can shake their hand. That'd be awesome. All right, so now we're sort of getting into the era that I know about. Uh, Toracon 2014 was actually my first Toracon. Familiar territory at last. <laughs> yeah, finally. Oh, my gosh. It was kind of a struggle there. We didn't really know who did what for a while, but uh, now it's going to be a little bit um, more better kept. It's, we're we're going to have a little bit more information from here on out. Uh, you could see right here we have our enforcer, staff, and volunteer badges, and then the attendee shirt, which... I think I have the shirt. It was actually uh, still black and white, but this version is in color, which is great. All this done by my good friend, Julianne A., which I, I know on Twitter at Filipina Panda. You got to check out her art. It's so good. 
book. Yeah. And then our con book for this year, this was done by another friend of mine, Gladys, also known as Zungi Online. Um, this year in particular was actually what we considered the 10th birthday of the con. Uh, you know, if you, you know, 10th year of the con. Um, as you can see, Gladys tried really hard to uh, incorporate as many of those different, you know, mascot designs that we've seen in the past into this one image with, you know, a new cat girl up in the front. Um, it's really nice looking. I just love, all, love to see all the different uh, characters and different art styles and stuff. Yeah, you can see some familiar faces in there and you will see them come back again in about five years in our little history lesson. So stay tuned for that. And then this one was art by our own Jessie C once again. Um, she also, uh, in the cel for the means of celebration, uh, took to drawing a bunch of the different cat girls in her own uh, art style. Nice little party hat, the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable, oh my gosh. But yeah, that concludes uh, the sort of pre-mascot era. And now we're going to be moving on to uh, how we figured out how the mascots would look like, the designs, how they would act, and a lot more. Welcome to part two, the mascots era. Woo. So um, around 2014, 2015, there started being a lot more uh, artistic staff members, so much so that we sort of ended up having sort of an art, I don't know what you want to call it, maybe a, a, a subgroup on staff. Um, and it was an art team is what you could, you know, really yeah. call it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I believe 2015 was the very last year that we took uh, outside attendee submissions for art. So that would be the first year that the mascots were a thing. And that was yeah. also Julianne's last year as head of the uh, art department. That sounds about right, yeah. Yep. I still was not on staff by then, but now nope. we're going to go over the creation of the actual mascots. Before we get into this, this is, you know, my ancient art being used <laughs> for the silhouettes here. And I'm just like, God, they've evolved. <laughs> oh, yeah, so much. And you'll start seeing a lot more of uh, Alistair's and my own name on some of the credits here. But uh, in my case, for better or worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've definitely improved over the years, but I've always liked your art style. Well, you, we, it was pretty cringe. We can <laughs> In your opinion, um, but yeah, it was the early stuff was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, let's move on to basically, we'll read out some of the conversation of the creation of the mascots. So at the beginning of the creation of the mascots in that timeline, uh, they were planning on having only one or possibly two mascots that were really intended to be designed, but there were a lot of differing opinions on how the mascots should look and act. So the artists kind of wanted the mascots that would uh, be versatile and appeal to a wide audience. Uh, no one really knew how to achieve that until someone brought up the idea that there should be, you know, more than one mascot. And here you have some uh, Facebook comments and messages. Uh, that sort of a lot of you watching are probably like you Facebook staff uses Facebook I can happily say we have not used Facebook since like this year oh well, yeah you're being shown to you not this year as in 2020 yeah it's uh it's a really weird to deal with we don't like the messaging system we use something else now but um of course, also we it's still... Facebook. Why would you use Facebook for yeah. something like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we we still you know bring you news and stuff on Facebook, but that's just not our uh, preferred way to communicate now. So here is basically the birth of the Torah family. Uh, basically, they were considering to do four mascots, but fun fact, there was going to be. A tiger as sort of a pet but we figured that four mascots were enough and I am so grateful for that because four is more than enough to draw. I mean I do think it would be cute to give them kind of like a Pikachu kind of sidekick type of deal 
you know, people eat that kind of thing up. Like, yeah. Fate Grand Order has Bo and, you know, Pokemon Pikachu, all that kind of jazz. Just as long as we but, don't I mean, need extra merch for it. Oh my gosh, we already make enough as is. <laughs> sure. Um, it's a lot of work. You can see that, the, like, you can see, like, they are referred to as, like, the Tora family. And, like, I've always seen them more as, like, you know, the friend kind of family than relatives. I know that in, in the initial Absolutely. stages they were going for, like, family, family. But, like, I don't know. I see it more as, like, you know, all of us on staff, we're family. All of you attendees, you're family to us. That's the kind of family that at least I imagine them to be. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a really good way to look at it. So, yeah, you can see here, here's the pet tiger. Um, and here's sort of... Uh, they're forming the ideas of what some of the characters would be like. We'll leave this up here so you can read it real quick. We don't want to read it out loud just to save on time. Feel free to pause it. Yeah. I mean, you can you can see aspects of like the certain, you know, mascots that we have really popping out. Two yep. boys, two girls. You got that uh, younger, two, two younger ones, two older ones. We got we hit that point. Um as you can see, the, the goggles get mentioned in there, which Joe's <laughs> had since day one. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here is basically where the birth of the mascots begin. You can see in the bottom right corner, that is, I believe, Kyo. He has those very iconic goggles, as we just mentioned. Correct. Um, yeah, so each staff member suggested a, a set of personalities for each of the four Toracon mascots. And they were tweaked slightly in the following months, but these suggestions right here on the left were essentially what became the Toracon mascots that we know and love today. Mm -hmm. Certified club meme. Just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> Certified. Oh, I see it in the bottom. Yeah, so here it gives a little bit of... Um, an explanation to the names. Uh, those aren't the final names, obviously. We know Kyo very well now. Um, but yeah. Here it is. Yeah, these the mascots were originally going to be based on, you know, a uh, one for every season of the year kind of motif, where we have Saki, her name means blossom, which is representative of spring. Kyo is today, which I mean, not really summery in my opinion, but you can make the argument that, you know, sunny bright, hot kind of deal. That's the summary, I guess. Kaede being maple leaf for autumn, and Sugi is cedar for a winter kind of look. Yeah, so my personal And I remember favorite. that jacket very well on Sugi. All the artists hated drawing it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, that looks like so much work. <laughs> His jacket looks like it's kind of like a turtleneck thing with another jacket, like a fluffy jacket over it, but no, that's all one piece, and all the artists oh, hated it. God. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine that would be tough to cosplay, too. Oh, mm -hmm. man. But my favorite right here is Kaede. I've always loved her. Uh, I've cosplayed her a few times, if you've seen me at some table swaps. And I've always been the staffer dressed as Kyo every year. <laughs> yep, That's me. We've had some people cosplay as uh, Sugi and Saki, but I think that uh, Kyo and Kaede are sort of the darlings of Toracon. I don't know, Sugi's my darling, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty fair, oh my gosh. In his current design, whenever one of the staffers draws him with stubble? Mm. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, yeah. Big agree. <laughs> yeah, you'll hear more about the new designs later, because actually Alistair was the one that created the most recent designs. Well, I had a hand in it, it was a team effort. Well, sure, but I think we should credit you the most, because I believe we had a contest? Yeah. Yeah, I was the one who ran the contest. I should know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for that's for a few slides from now, though. Yeah, you'll see it later. But right here, we have uh, 2015 shirts. You got, uh, if you can't tell by the colors, the top left is staff, bottom right is volunteer, uh, top right is enforcer, and bottom left is just regular attendee. This is our last year with enforcers as well, before we were just like, well... Let's just keep it simple. Keep it between staff and volunteers. So this would be the last of the red shirts, for better or worse. Yeah, and I think it also had to do with, you know, security being on RIT campus and, you know, probably the fact that there 
probably shouldn't be people like getting into trouble as enforcers. But, you know, mm-hmm. that's that's besides the point. Um, the orange, red, and blue shirts were all designed by Julianne A. I'm sure you've heard her name before in the past slides. And we also have the attendee shirt created by Tiffany. And these were the final uh, original design art for the mascots on the left side here. Those are, again, by Gladys. Um, I've always adored her chibi style. And then on the right, you can see uh, Julianne's cover art for... uh, the con book for that year. Yeah, it looks like it was made in marker. It might just be the texture. It could be. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she did all her stuff digitally, but what do I know? <laughs> I, was yeah, a, I, I was a newbie on staff at the time, so I was ill, ill-informed in everyone's different ways. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I know I was when I first joined. Oh my Here's God. all the different badges for that year. Um, I think uh, with this year, we actually started uh, sticking with specific colors for the specific badges. So from this year forward, Artist Alley is always that blue, Vendor is always that green. The attendee ones are always orange with slight differences for the days, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see the badge art was split between myself and Tiffany for this year. Once again, I'm cringing at, you know, my old, <laughs> old 2015 art. <laughs> but, yeah, I think we hey, all do that. Done. <laughs> You've definitely changed. They a do lot. say that Toracon gives you the means to grow and works good on your portfolio. And hey, I'm employed. Absolutely. So if any of you bright eyed, bushy tail young students are listening, hey, join Toracon staff and you can get a job. Yes, please join staff. All right, we're now on to 2016. Once again, we have more Alistair art on the right for both the uh, the staff and the volunteer. And on the left, once again, is Tiffany's art. And I love the adorable chibis. You know what's I'm... incredibly ironic about these shirts? What? What's incredibly ironic about these shirts is the fact that for the 2016 one, because in 2015, we had a good deal of like little golf carts to help, you know, uh, tow around like our guests between the different buildings. Because we all know RIT is a college campus. It sucks to walk everywhere. 2016, we didn't get any golf carts. I think maybe we had one. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> yep. Man, it must have hurt. Oh, and this was also my first year. This was my first year as the art director. Media didn't have its own department at this point as of yet. I believe 2016, we were still under operations. So it was me and maybe like three other people doing the art this year. Yep, and this is the year right before I joined, so I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and that's this is also when I took over the social media. So this uh, uh, picture on the left was the icon across all of our pages for quite some time. Both of both of these are my art again, which <laughs> I'm glad to also already see some improvement from the past year. I can rag on myself. Don't worry. Yeah, I absolutely. Um, and that's also the con book cover for 2016. We also, I believe we sold prints of that one. They were quite big, though, so I don't think they sold very well. (laughs) Yeah, I do believe so. Actually, in the next slide, we have some print designs right here. Yep. Do you want to? Once again, that's all mine on the top, but then on the bottom, those are um, art. uh, Those were all drawn by my good friend Claudia. You can follow her on Twitter at Inky Pine. Once again, she's employed out in California, so join Toracon. You can get a job. Yeah, and these and, are also by our good friend Yasin. Yeah, uh, you can see some some art by Yasin now, and I think there's some later, but I can't remember. Uh, but these are yeah. sort of some mystery pieces of art that you probably haven't seen before. Uh, as with all organizations, there tends to be you know some miscommunication with something so big. So these were intended to be printed. But they never were printed. So if you guys think that you might want some of these uh, printed, hit us up on social media. Tell us you want them. And maybe you will see them in a future Toracon. I could have sworn they were printed. Am I just, am I losing my mind? Maybe I am. I don't know. I don't remember seeing maybe this was the batch. Maybe maybe this was the batch where they printed small. I could be wrong. That could have been it. Because I could have sworn we printed it. But hey, if, listen to Rachel, not me. She's the one in charge right now. (laughs) Yeah, let us know. Tell us. We want the 2016 uh, pieces of art. 
rare art, like a <laughs> shiny Pokemon. Yeah. So now we have the all the badges. Uh, all the badges were done by. I'm looking at my research. These are also by Yasin. This is by Yasin. See, I knew we were gonna see more of Yasin's work. <laughs> there. Oh, all... there's more to come. Don't worry. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Uh, I didn't look at the slide. She page. has a poster. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can see all these cute little chibis. I miss her art. I'm sure some people are confused as to why Kaede is holding a whale in the Sunday one. Fun fact, our con chair for that year was our beloved friend Ryan. Happy birthday to our good friend Ryan. <laughs> um, whales are his favorite animal, so just as a fun little Easter egg, we included a little plushy one in the badge for it. Oh, noted. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Once again, we see the return of my art on the staff and volunteer shirts. Um, I really tried to capture the spirit of what it is to be staff on our, you know, orange little shirt there. Kaede on fire and everyone falling <laughs> to their doom. I definitely Volunteers feel Volunteers, you know, a, a much more hopeful <laughs> side of that. And then we see... Uh, Tiffany's art once again uh, on the um, 2017 merchandise shirt. People really loved that design, so. Yeah, I did too. Thank you to Tiffany for that one. And here we have our con book cover and two of our other prints. Um, I did the con book cover for that year, um, which one of my favorites personally. Um, and that is Tiffany's art in the center. And once again, we see Yasin's art in the print there. I believe we have extras of these still. I could be wrong. I don't, at least we did after that con, but maybe if you poke around, Rachel, you'll find them. <laughs> I'm not sure. We actually just got a storage unit so we could store all the stuff that we have. So I don't know. It's probably going to be hell to work through, but maybe we will. Maybe mm. we'll uh, put on another museum or something. But yeah, it would be great to see some of these again. This was Julianne's print art for that year, and it's also one of my favorite art pieces for the con ever. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just look at everyone. I love how Kaede has a different hairstyle from normal. You don't see that a lot. Um, a lot of people tend to stick to the original, you know, models for the characters, but uh, it's okay to stray from the original design. I'm hoping that you'll see that more as time goes on. If you ever join our art contest, know that we like to see things switched up a bit. Absolutely, go for it. Oh, I love all of these. Oh my gosh. Okay, I want to talk about these. Go ahead, all yours. So, these are, as you can see, the 2017 badges. Um, they're done by a couple of different artists. Uh, you could see that uh, the guest and attendee badges were drawn by the same Claudia, who did the one, one of the 2016 mm -hmm. print sets. And the rest of the badges that you can see are done by a Juho C. Uh, you could sort of tell by the style uh, right now. It's got like sort of a nice like watercolor effect. You'll see more of her work in a minute. Uh, and where can we find her on social media, Alistair? Juho's Twitter handle is, uh, and I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, is Chua97. That's spelled C-H-O-I-X-X. -X. 97 on Twitter. Yeah, definitely go check out some of her art. She has, um, I believe, graduated from Toracon staff, but still makes amazing pieces of artwork that you should definitely check out. She did also follow. sell in the Artist Alley for a few years, so you might have, you know, purchased your, her art without even noticing. Yep, and you might see it again, too. Who knows? Oh boy, 2018! So here's where I sort of started joining the staff. Uh, now I get to cringe at my old art. Um, <laughs> I did the staff and volunteer shirts, and the shirts that were the attendee shirts were done. Those were also by Tiffany, I believe. Those were done by Tiffany. Yep, you're right. Uh, actually, I think I'm wearing that shirt right now. I still love it. <laughs> it's very worn, but. You know, I, I still wear it when I find it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, I don't really know my reasoning behind these, but you can see a Toracon logo in the background. Uh, let's move on to some more work. Okay, this one was definitely done by Juho, right? 
You can tell by the art style. Nope, this was by a staffer named Mary Wren. She was only around for a short while, and I know that her uh, class course was kind of really intense. So, oh, wow. Okay. I mean, her art was gorgeous. Yeah, it's <laughs> this very was our similar cover for that year. It's a very similar art style to uh, Juho's, but I'm really glad we got to see some more art from, you know, different artists. Because I mm-hmm. know Juho works hard, and, well, all the artists work hard, but it's good to see a bunch of different art styles. Okay, these were done these by Juho. Juho. <laughs> yes. Um, so I have a fun fact for you guys. Uh, many of the attendees, including myself, even though I was staff, thought that uh, these prints were actually a reference to Splatoon which was actually pretty popular at the time uh, when the convention happened. But from what I heard through the rumor mill was that Juho did not, was not actually thinking about Splatoon at all when she did this. But I, you know, that's, that's just hearsay. We don't know. Maybe she can confirm. Hopefully she'll be here. All right, we're going to move on to the badges for this year. Uh, all the badges were done by Claudia, uh, so we'll take a minute to just admire them. Let's see. Oh, my favorite is definitely the vendor with all the plushies and stuff. That's definitely me. <laughs> They're all really cute. I adore Claudia's art. Adorable, yeah. All right, moving on to 2019, the big 15-year surprise event. Uh, I guess it wasn't much of a surprise. It was more of a surprise party uh, because we had just done one five years ago uh, to celebrate 10 years. But 15 years is also a big milestone, so we wanted to celebrate that too. So in the bottom left corner, that is my own art. Uh, I actually started learning Illustrator around then, so it probably looks a little bit wonky. (laughs) I could definitely do better work now, but it's fun to look back at that stuff. I think Um, it's precious. (laughs) Thank you. And um, at the top and right are my friend Brian's art. He has a very distinct style, and you can kind of see that um, all the mascots look a little bit more mature, which is kind of interesting. Um, Jesse actually, <laughs> Jesse made the comment that um, Kyo looks a bit more adult, and she thinks that it's adorable. <laughs> That's definitely, you could talk about this. You know, what's really messed up about both of these is that these are both my art for the same year. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Oh my God, they look so different. Yeah, I guess. Exactly. Um, <laughs> the one on the left, that was the comic book cover for that year. And the one on the right was the attendee badge for that year. And this is the first year that we also started using a vertical format for the badges on a nicer plasticky kind of uh, dock to print on. Um, so now your badges are waterproof. Congratulations. That was my big <laughs> mission for that year. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Um, wild. <laughs> yeah, I think something that can be said about the amount of art that you draw and the amount that really any staff member draws uh, in Torcon, you could definitely see the improvement in just a year. That's how much we draw. And that definitely speaks to your improvement as well. Um, you know, throughout your classes, obviously. Like, this is such a major style change in just one year. It really impresses me. But, you know, they both have... This isn't about me. This is about (laughs) Torakon. But yeah, uh, every artist has their own quirks. And even if you see art by the same same person, you know, from years before, you could definitely see a change. And maybe an improvement in people's opinions, maybe not. But I think it's all great. Oh, I love these. Oh, my gosh. These were done by Juho um, to celebrate the 15th year of Torcon. These were the prints. Actually, uh, I don't think I managed to get my hand on some, but um, she wanted to do this cute formal theme, and I absolutely adore the color palettes here. Saki looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I really like uh, Sugi. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you could see in 2019, there are a lot of different artists who did the badges this year. Uh, you could see at first on the left is uh, Sally. Sally is the, was the con chair for two years. Um, and following that, the volunteer and staff badges were done by Julian again. Julianne again. 
uh, artist Ali and Vendor badges were done by Brian. You just saw his art recently. And press and guest badges were done by Goose. And Alistair, of course, did the attendee badges. Okay, let's move on to the con that wasn't. I guess I'll take over for this because I was, you know, sort of in charge of this. And um, The floor is yours. <laughs> yeah, Alistair had to step back due to work, you know. There's a lot. There's, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Do not try to manage a convention social media while you are working a full-time job and there's a pandemic going on. Absolutely. Don't recommend it. <laughs> it. It was crazy. You know, Alistair definitely has a reason to step back from Toricon. You know, as you get your own life outside of RIT, uh, these things tend to happen. But I'm still so happy to have him, you know, on staff and, you know, willing to do art once in a while. That's and, mine right there. Once again, yeah. the evolution continues. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think, what was this for? This was for uh, the flyers that we going passed to out. Be it was going to be for the weekend badge. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, and I think you saw it all over social media, too. Um, and so we don't want to share a lot because we do want to definitely save some art uh, in the stocks for future, you know, future reference and for future use because art is takes a long time to do, and sometimes we don't have the time to do it. So I'm sorry, you won't be getting a lot of sneak peeks here, but you will be able to see some of the stuff that we printed for the 2020 event uh, if you go to our merch store, which you will see a link right here. And you will notice that this is the most recent design for our mascots after we had our little artist throwdown of yep. who could redesign them. Yep, we had a artist contest and Alistair was the winner, which I wasn't surprised about, but there are a lot of uh, so many great entries and i believe you could take i'll be honest i really liked yours and kevin's <laughs> oh thank you i really um i liked brian's i like the traditional aspect of it i hope we can like revisit that because i mean I alternative outfits absolutely yeah let's see some fan art of it um so as you know the uh, olympics were supposed to happen in 2020 in tokyo so that's sort of what we based our theme off of uh in 2020 you will see some sort of sports related stuff in the uh, merchandise uh, shop. And if you see some sort of sports related stuff in the future, uh, you might want to keep in mind that maybe it was done in 2020 because, yeah, there's a lot of secret art that we didn't release. So look forward to that. As for the shirts, uh, we are only selling the one on the left, which is the attendee shirt done by the lovely Becky. Uh, you'll see they've done a lot of art this year for 2021, especially for social media. Um, the top one is the the orange staff shirt, and the blue one is, uh, once again, the volunteer shirt. Fun fact about Becky, she actually entered the art contest for three years, I believe. First year, didn't place. Second year, runner-up. Third year, first place. Yep. <laughs> then she joins staff. <laughs> then she joins staff. That's yep. dedication. Definitely dedication. Yep. And actually, uh, Becky has graduated from the undergraduate program. I'm not sure if they're still uh, in the graduate program, but they still contribute art to this day. And we'll probably to continue to contribute art as years move on. Once you're here, you're here forever. Don't forget. <laughs> Yep. Like me. So here are the st staff, volunteer, presenter, etc. badges. Uh, I'll just take you through some of uh, the artists here. Staff, presenter, those were done by Sally. Volunteer, uh, guest, and press, those were done by uh, Catherine. Artist, Alley and Vendor might look a little bit familiar. They were uh, recolored from some of Brian's art. Uh, Saturday and Sunday were my own art, and the weekend badge was Alistair's. So now we come upon Torah Connect 2021. Uh, so if you want to see That's some right art, now. that is right now. <laughs> if you want to see some <laughs> of the cool art that we made this year, uh, we did work very hard despite there being a pandemic. Um, 
we still wanted to have merchandise for you guys. I would highly recommend checking out the shop, even if you don't want to buy anything. Uh, all the money Support goes Support your small right into local business. Not that we're a business. We're not a business, but uh, we are. All the money goes right to the organization. None of us make any money off of this, unfortunately. I would like to make money off of this, but I cannot. Um, but yeah, if if you could just spread the word on Facebook and social media, all kind of all kinds, um, we would really appreciate it. So yeah. tell your friends that not only do you miss cons, you miss the feel of small cons that are perpetually trapped in like <laughs> two thousand and nine, and tell them to support Toracon before all of the big corporate cons eat us uh, eat us alive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, we hope to be going for many more years. But uh, let's just continue on with Tor Connect 2021. Do you have any final parting comments, Alistair? Um, you know, I did have a nice remark before that I was going to say at the end, and now I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm fine. sitting here looking like a clown dressed as a cat boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Um, I guess all I have to say is thank you guys for attending this convention. I know it was really disappointing that we couldn't have a 2020 convention, but I'm hoping that, uh, you know, this will fill the little Toracon shaped hole in your heart, at least temporarily. Um, yeah, I guess just look forward to Toracon 2022. Tell all your friends, support your local cat boys. <laughs> Support your local cat and cat girls and, and cat, cat girls. and bees. Just cat everything. People. Just all cats. Any kind of cat. We appreciate Support it. your local cat. <laughs> and with that, uh, I guess we'll log off now. We'll Great. See thanks you for, later. Thanks for sticking. Thank you for sticking around, everyone. Yes, thank you. I hope you all have a good day. <laughs>